Good afternoon. Thank you guys for coming. Uh, this is uh, obviously to talk about the tragic um, deaths that occurred on Knob Hill Courts um, of five victims on Saturday night. Uh, Saturday night, about 326, officers received a check the well being call on the 2600 block of Knob Hill Court. Uh, when they arrived, uh, officers made entry into the house and discovered five uh, victims uh, that had been. Uh, killed inside the residence. The victims ranged in age from uh, there were two adults um, and three children. Uh, the youngest was six months old, a five-year-old, and a six-year-old uh, were found inside the residence. Uh, detectives responded to the scene, immediately began a uh, homicide investigation, and they identified uh, Mr. Martin Martinez as a person of interest in the homicide. Uh, this was based partially on his past relationship with Amanda Cruz, who was one of the victims inside the residence, um, and he was also the father um, of the six-month-old child that was uh, found deceased inside the residence. Uh, as part of the investigation, detectives uh, began attempting to locate um, Mr. Martinez um, and sent out information to other law enforcement agencies that he was a person of interest in this case. If Back to a, another case involving Mr. Martinez, uh, which may be uh, tied to this. Uh, in October of 2014, uh, Mr. Martinez was listed as a potential suspect in a crime report involving the death of a two-year-old, uh, Christopher Ripley. Uh, Christopher um, sustained head injuries um, while Mr. Martinez was watching him alone uh, at his residence. Um, Christopher was taken to, uh, to uh, a local hospital and then taken to Madeira um, for those head injuries where he passed away uh, two days later from those injuries. Based on the number of victims we had at the Knob Hill location, as well as uh, the information from the prior homicide that we'd received earlier that week, um, on Thursday we'd gotten information um, from a neuropathologist a specialist who we had since um, to assist with the autopsy of, of Chris Ripley for the October uh, homicide. Um, on Thursday, we got a verbal uh, notification that she determined or her findings were that Chris had died as a result of a homicide or, or blunt, for, blunt force trauma, not by an accident. Based on that information um, and the fact that we, we needed to um, identify and or locate Mr. Martinez, a Ramey, or, Ramey warrant was issued for his arrest. Uh, Mr. Martinez was found in San Jose at about 1.05 in the morning, um, Sunday morning, coming out of a movie theater uh, with his father. Um, at this time, uh, or at the time of uh, the verbal notification of that homicide, the death certificate um, had not been completed. Um, as that was still an ongoing, ongoing investigation as well. Um, Department of Children's Services had stepped in to protect uh, Mrs. Cruz's other children um, in between the, the time of the death of Mr. or of, of young Christopher Ripley and this incident. Um, and uh, I'd just like to thank the uh, Department of Justice uh, Forensic Services Bureau for their help. Uh, they had a forensic team respond to the scene and uh, and help us with forensic evidence at the scene, do collection of forensic evidence, and they're in the process of, of processing that evidence as well. Our detectives are continuing to do interviews um, and to determine exactly what occurred uh, at the Knob Hill residence. Uh, we're also um, looking to make sure that, that all of those victims uh, find justice, whether that be um, Mr. Mar Mr. Martinez being responsible or um, ruling out that anybody else could be possibly responsible for that. Um, so in closing, I'd like to extend my condolences to the family and friends uh, of the victims uh, of this horrible crime. And uh, with that, I'll, I'll take a few questions. Chief, what took nine months to, it seems like nine months passed from Chris Ripley's death to the verbal word that it was, it was uh, blunt trauma. What took nine months to get that? And you got that word on Thursday the 16th. This new murder was on Saturday. When did you put out the warrant for his arrest? On that Thursday? No. Um, and actually, what took nine months is, um, as uh, many of you know, uh, homicide investigations do take a, a great deal of time. Um, you only have one shot at making an arrest or, or making that case, so you want to make sure that you do that properly. 
Uh, with the nine months, um, part of that was hiring a forensic analyst to, to do additional testing um, on Christopher Ripley. Um, and so sometimes that just takes time. Uh, the verbal notification was on Thursday. The Ramey warrant was issued um, Saturday night after Mr. Martinez became a person of interest in this homicide. And that was so that we could ensure that he was taken off the street and did not disappear while we were looking into this homicide. Why not issue right, right, right from Thursday when you knew it was one force and he had already been a suspect? At that time, uh, there was no indications that there would be any violence uh, within that family. Um, there had been no calls for service at that location. Um, it is believed that Mr. Martinez and, and uh, Ms. Cruz had continued a, a relationship. In fact, the, the six-month-old was their child. Um, and so the verbal notification is not the final report. It's not the final coroner's report. It's also not the final report from that pathologist. So there was still some investigating or paperwork that needed to be done before that case was filed. Uh, we actually sped it up on Saturday night when Mr. Martinez became a person of interest in this homicide. Chief Carroll, with all due respect, yes. did the police department drop the ball on this one? Mr. Martinez was a suspect in this two-year-old's death, and for nine months he was allowed to still have continued contact with this family and these children. Could all of these individuals' deaths have been prevented? Uh, absolutely not. The Modesto Police Department did not drop the ball on this. Uh, like I said, uh, when it comes to homicide investigations, you only have one shot to make your case. Um, and there's much more than just the police department that's involved in criminal investigations. We put together a case. Um, there has to be enough probable cause to arrest that individual. Um, and then there has to be enough for the district attorney to be able to file charges on that case. So, um, no, uh, the police department did not drop the ball. Um, it is horrible that this tragedy happened, but there are no indications leading up to that time that anything like this would occur. As a follow-up question, do you, have you guys identified a motive, perhaps, for this set of crimes, and, and does it have anything to do with the forensic specialist report having come out two, di two days prior? We have not dis established a motive at this time, and we have um, spoken with the coroner's office. Uh, my understanding is very limited people knew that that verbal report came out um, from that specialist, so we do not believe that that, that played a factor in this in this incident. Can you talk about the children and what their connection was? We've heard some speculation that one of the children in the house was maybe just there for a sleepover and not related. Uh, that is the case. Uh, one of the children was there, uh, not for a sleepover, but was dropped off that morning to attend an event with the family. And who's the other not adult? The other adult is uh, Anna Brown um, Romero, uh, age 57, and she is Mr. Martinez's mom. Involved. She said CPS was involved with the other children, but Correct. Martinez was still living at that house. So, what exactly did CPS do? The, I can't answer that question. Um, they did uh, enforce those those orders in the last at least two months. He was not living at that residence any longer. Um, when it comes to what was done before that to enforce that order, I can't answer that question. Do you know how the how the people were killed, and was there any indication that any of the um, women tried to protect the children? Um, I, I'm not going to answer that just because we're still in an active investigation. Um, obviously, I do know, but it's, it's just not something I want to answer because we're in an active investigation. You can't say whether it's gunfire or some other. Yeah, I'm not going to at this time. We have two time for two more questions. Alejandra, did you have something? Yeah, it was the same question. Okay. Thank you. Two more. Uh, how, how long were the bodies, uh, were they dead? I mean, how long did it take before police found them? The, the, the officers were responded to the, the Knob Hill Court address. Um, after some of uh, Miss Cruz's friends um, went there because she didn't show up for a lunch date. And so it, it was not a long period of time. I knew that Miss Cruz had other children. Were there any other children that were in the house that survived or were outside of the house but have survived, and, and are they now with CPS? Uh, there were no survivors inside the house. Is that last child related or not? Is that last child the, the, off? The, the children... Um, one was Mrs. Cruz's uh, daughter. Uh, the six year or six month old was was again a child of Mrs. Cruz and Mr. Martinez. There was another, I believe, five year old, which was a family relative, um, a, more of a distant relative of the family. And the fourth? Uh, there were three children and two adults. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you guys very much. Thank uh, you. This concludes our press.